Welcome to our comprehensive guide on essential cybersecurity terms and acronyms. In today's interconnected digital world, understanding these concepts is crucial for everyone. We'll start with the most common terms and then gradually move to more specialized ones. Let's dive in. First up is malware. This is short for malicious software. This umbrella term covers any program designed to do damage or gain unauthorized access to a computer system. Next up is phishing. And no, not like you're going fishing, catching a fish out of a body of water, more like one of the most common cybersecurity threats in the world. It's a technique used by cyber criminals to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information by posing as a legitimate entity. A more targeted form of phishing is called spear phishing. This is where attackers customize their approach for specific individuals or organizations. Moving on to defenses. A firewall is a crucial network security system. It monitors and controls incoming and outgoing network traffic based on predetermined security rules. A specific type of a firewall is what's called WAF or Web Application Firewall. This filters, monitors, and blocks HTTP or HTTPS traffic to and from a web application. Encryption is a fundamental concept in data security. It's the process of encoding information so that only authorized parties can access it. Building on top of encryption, we have what's called E2EE or end-to-end -end encryption. This ensures that only the communicating parties can read the messages between each other. A VPN or a virtual private network is a service that encrypts your internet traffic and is often used to try and hide your online activity. However, some would argue that this is not actually true and your traffic could still be identified and tracked back to you. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about authentication. 2FA or two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security by requiring two different forms of identification to access an account. Now building on 2FA, we have MFA or multi-factor authentication. This can include additional factors beyond just the two methods as mentioned earlier. You could think of multi-factor authentication as being able to use other physical devices to help identify who you are. Maybe it's your phone, maybe it's your face ID, maybe it's a fingerprint. That's what multi-factor is about. Moving on to attack methods or DDoS, DDoS or Distributed Denial of Service Attack. This aims to disrupt normal traffic of a targeted server by overwhelming it with a flood of internet traffic. Related to DDoS is botnet, which is a network of infected computers that's controlled by an attacker and then often used in a DDoS attack. In the realm of web security, XSS or cross-site scripting is a vulnerability that allows attackers to inject malicious scripts into web pages that are viewed by other users of that page. Similarly, there's CSRF or cross-site request forgery, and this is an attack that forces authenticated users to execute unwanted actions on a web application in which they are currently authenticated. Sometimes you'll hear the term zero day exploit. This refers to a software vulnerability unknown to those who should be interested in its mitigation, like the vendor. These are particularly dangerous as they pose a large risk to both users and companies. To keep track of known vulnerabilities, we use what's called CVEs or common vulnerabilities and exposures. This is a list of publicly disclosed computer security flaws. In addition to that, we have what's called CVSS or Common Vulnerability Scoring System, and it's used alongside CVEs to capture the characteristics of a vulnerability and produce a numerical score to help reflect the severity of it. Next up, we have Penetration Testing or Pen Testing. This is an authorized simulated cyber attack on a computer system to evaluate its security. It's crucial to use pen testing as a means to find vulnerabilities before attackers do. Social engineering is the psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information. It's a non-technical attack method that exploits human psychology. To help with monitoring and analysis, SIEM or Security Information and Event Management is a system that collects and analyzes log data to monitor critical activities in an organization. You've probably heard IoT or Internet of Things. This refers to the interconnected network of physical devices embedded with electronics, software, and network connectivity. While they're convenient, they also introduce new security challenges. In the workplace, there's something called BYOD or bring your own device. And this is a policy allowing employees to use personal devices for work purposes. This can increase productivity, but also introduces some security risks. To manage all these security aspects, many organizations have what's called an SOC or Security Operations Center. This is a centralized unit that deals with security issues on an organizational and technical level. 
Finally, to close this out, we have what's called cyber hygiene, and this refers to the practices and steps that users take to maintain system health and improve online security. It's something everyone should practice. That wraps it up. Understanding these terms is just the beginning of cybersecurity awareness. So stay vigilant and keep learning. And speaking of that, did I miss any acronyms or terms you'd like to learn more about? If so, let me know in the comments down below. That does it for this video. If you got value out of it, be sure to like it down below and share it with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.